Continuing this indoor barebow setup and tuning mini series, I'm going to be building these Easton Superdrive 23s for this Win and Win Meta DX barebow setup that I've been working on. So I got a lot of components on the bench behind me. I've got fletchings and knocks and points and pins and shafts, and I've got all sorts of different things that I need to do to these arrows to get them ready to be shootable uh, because they are just right now just raw shafts. So in this video, I'm going to install all the components get the arrows fletched up, and potentially cut them before I get this Meta DX riser all tuned up and shooting well for this year's indoor season. You're watching the Jake Minsky YouTube channel. So like I said there in the intro, this is a continuation of this bare bow tuning for 18 meters 20 yards indoor season mini series. I've already gone through the rough setup of this Meta DX here with the MXT 10 wood limbs. If you haven't seen the first video of this one I will have links in the description below and a card at the top up there for you to check out. And you might want to start there before we get into building arrows in case you want to know more about why I'm using this riser and how I'm setting it up and whatnot. Today we're building arrows. I'm going to fletch them up, put some components in them, burn some feathers and do all sorts of different things bring you along the way and show you everything I'm doing and explain to you why I am doing it most importantly because I have a method to my madness. Now remember I'm not an expert barebow shooter but I am an expert recurve shooter and I know a thing or two about indoor setups and what I'm going to do is apply my methods and my principles that I've learned and used over the years with success on recurve and try to apply them to barebow as best as I possibly can. Before I get the camera positioned over the bench, I want to explain to you why I'm even using these Easton Superdrive 23s. The reason being, primarily, is they're extremely lightweight, which that will result in less time of the arrow being in the bow when I'm shooting it, because a lighter arrow will move faster, obviously, with the same draw weight, right? And so that means it'll spend less time in the bow, less chance for me to affect the arrow's flight and performance out of the bow, and hopefully I'll have a little bit more forgiveness in the system that way, at least when I make a mistake. So I'm choosing that because I'm not heavily practiced right now. I have not been training, have not been practicing. I've barely shot a bow at all. I've not had any time at all to do anything like that. Just is what it is. So what I'm doing is trying to build the most forgiving arrow that I can for indoors. Yes, there are some other arrows on the market that could work very well, but I wanted to try a fat arrow and see how it goes. I didn't want to try 2312s or anything like that, and I don't have the RX-7s. Plus, the RX-7s are heavier, and these ones are very, very lightweight. So again, more speed, hopefully more forgiveness. Okay, so I've got everything set up here on the bench. I've got my Easton Superdrive 23s. These are a 475 spine. So they'll probably be a little bit on the weak side, at least for what I'm currently and usually normally setting up and shooting, but I don't know yet. We'll find out. My rough rule of thumb that I found over the years is with parallel shaft arrows, they act 50 spine stiffer dynamically. So meaning comparing to an X10, say if I'm shooting a 410X10, I'll probably shoot somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 450 parallel shaft arrow to get the same tune. These just act a little bit dynamically stiffer when it's pound for pound or, you know, thousandths of an inch, thousandths of an inch comparison between different arrows. Parallel shaft arrows act stiffer than barreled arrows. So this should act like a 425, plus it's fat. They also act a little bit dynamically stiffer that way as well. And I'm going to be shooting them full length, but I've also backed down the draw weight as far as it'll go on my Win & Win Meta DX and MXT-10 setup. So I have no idea how this is going to go, and that's why I'm going to build these arrows in this manner. I'm going to be assembling them, putting pin knocks in. These pin knocks don't come for this arrow. Technically, these were for the Triumph 500s, but I took my calipers and measured the outside diameter of these compared to these here, which are G-knock unibushings. They're the exact same size, and these are lighter plus the pin knocks are lighter as well. And as we know, if you've been watching this channel at all, lighter in the back of the arrow with a finger shooter means more forgiveness. So I'm making it as light as humanly possible. I'm also going to be using feathers. They're the lightest thing you can put on your arrow in the market available. And I'm going to be putting them on with a lot of helical. I'm gonna use left wing, left helical. 
And what I'll do is, because these are flu flus, I will burn them then to the shape that I want, which is a little bit longer because they're five and a quarter inches, but I'll have a relatively high profile straight all the way back to get a lot of surface area to make that arrow spin, stabilize, and drag as much as possible, giving me, hopefully, as much forgiveness as possible. Now, I'm gonna be cutting them, not at all. They are all cut exactly the same length. They are full length. I'm gonna leave them that way, and I'm gonna glue these one-piece points in, which are 125 grains, go out there and shoot some bear shafts and see how they actually do to start with before I fully commit to building all of the arrows out this way. That's why I only grabbed six here, and I'm gonna start with these because I may have to shorten them because they may be too weak, and if that's the case, I'm happy. I'm happy about that, and that's why I'm starting with hot melt glue because I can take the points back out again. If I epoxy them, super glue them in, or whatever, you're not getting them out, at least not without damaging the arrows in my experience. So that's what we're doing to start, is gluing in the components. I'm gonna be using a propane torch and some hot melt glue. If you don't have all of these tools, I will have links in the description below for you to grab any of these things on Amazon in case you don't have them. A good quality pencil tip propane torch is a must have when building arrows. You can use butane if you'd like. Uh, I prefer the propane, it just lasts a lot longer because it's in this big can. So, from this position, I don't think I'll melt anything and I will do my best to not cook the camera or any of the audio gear because I'd like you to see what I'm doing from this point of view anyway. So I'm gonna get everything set up and easily accessible. That's very important. And see how I have the arrows laid out here? I'm gonna always grab the shaft with the left hand and glue this component in like this so I don't have to be flipping the shaft around back and forth when it's time to actually start gluing stuff. Barely want any sort of flame. There, that should be safe. All right, so I am not going to grab this part of the pin or the pin part. I'm gonna grab the outside of the bushing like so, so that way I don't damage the actual component at all because it's important that you don't hurt it because it'll affect the alignment and change things unnecessarily. Spin it, get it evenly coated all around. I did not grab the pin, I just used the pliers as a press pressure against the flat part of the surface. Now I'm gonna store them off to the side here, like this, where the actual weight of the shaft is pushing on the pin to keep it in place as this glue cures, not cures, but cools off enough to handle. Now these do have little fancy pin holes uh, for the pins to go into. You can do that as well. I've done that successfully in the past and maybe I'll do that and see how it goes for a few arrows. I've done them on X10s but not on fat arrows but that's should be no different. Any little bit that I can lighten the back of this arrow up, I'm going to do. And these pin knock adapters are, I think, four grains, 13 grains versus 16 grains. So three grains lighter, plus I believe pin knocks, I'd have to check and double check, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure pin knocks, Easton pin knocks, are lighter than the Easton G knocks. Um, I don't know by how much, probably a few grains, two grains maybe, I am not sure. But that adds up, and lighter feathers over veins, that also adds up. Plus the more steering of the feathers over similar weighted veins means, hopefully, even more forgiveness. Now you see I turn the arrow around, so this is the point end, because I'm going to hold on to it from this direction.
Now usually if I have no idea when it comes to tuning, I'll do really just two arrows, uh, especially if I am cutting them at all, because if I have to make them longer in any way, then I've only wasted two arrows that are cut and I can just shoot the rest in whatever length. But because these are starting at full length, I'm just going to put in six points because maybe I'll get lucky or maybe I'll be able to adjust the bow to make it work and uh, get a decent enough tune to at least start playing with this setup and see how it goes and then make a decision on if I need to make any adjustments at all. So you'll see I'm holding the point into the fire of this torch a lot longer than the pins. These are made out of steel. They take a lot longer to heat up than the aluminum. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but as I'm sitting here heating them up, you will see some water vapor, essentially, that is on the point, uh, and it was on the pin. It kind of starts as like a ghostly white, and then it just evaporates and dissipates off the actual component. And that's when I stop heating it up before I put the glue on it, because then I know that uh, any oils or anything that can possibly contaminate these points are gone. Now I did already clean the insides of the shafts. I used some denatured alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol, no, denatured alcohol on a cotton swab and just kind of swabbed out the inside of the shaft just to make sure it was nice and clean. It's not super necessary if they're uncut, um, but if you have cut them and you're using any sort of carbon shaft, absolutely necessary. Uh, I find that the dust will really inhibit and the adhesion of the points and the components rather in the system and it just ends up uh, really wanting to, and it really just ends up leaving you potentially with points or pins that want to come out of the shaft itself. So it's always a good idea to clean them out. If you haven't seen my previous videos on how to install components like a pro, I will have links in the description below and a card at the top up over there. So you can check those videos out and learn how to put components in properly and get all of the detailed info on how to make sure that your components won't come out. And also how to test them to make sure that you don't have any loose components because if it is rattling inside your arrows, it can potentially affect performance and accuracy and consistency. So it's very, very important to make sure that your components are glued in correctly. And then also it's important to check them to make sure that they don't rattle at all. Uh, when you drop them on like a carpeted surface, like a floor, and if they do, then go back and make sure that the components are glued in properly. All right, so there is all of the components glued in place. I can shut the torch off, let that cool down before I put it away, get the remaining glue off of the bench here. All right, I'm gonna put this stuff away that I don't need, at least off to the side. Pull out some Max Bond, my Bits and Burger left wing clamp, left wing feathers, and some activator. I'm gonna go run these under some cool water so that hardens the glue and makes it nice and cooled so I can peel these off really fast. I'll be right back. Okay, freshly cooled, still wet. Basically, now that the uh, glue is dry, not dry, but cool enough to actually peel, I'm gonna start with the pins. Peel that way, never go down towards the shaft because what you'll do if you don't peel it that way, away from the shaft, not that way, it will have the potential to hook a layer of carbon and you can peel a whole strip off the entire arrow. And then you might as well just throw the arrow out or turn it into a pen because it's garbage. One shaft complete, ready to go, ready to shoot, and ready to fletch first actually. Set that aside. Now, if I was shooting fingers on these arrows, like split finger, I probably wouldn't use the pin knock, I'd use the G knock because the arrow steps up so fat and it'd probably touch my fingers um, because there's just not enough clearance here from the groove of the knock to where the shaft is. So I would probably hit my fingers on it shooting split fingers. So I wouldn't do the pin knocks with recurve. I'll probably try them to see if they do clear my fingers, but ideally, with uh, string walking, they'll be nowhere near my fingertips. In addition to shooting this setup with the actual pin knock system instead of G knocks, is because if these this arrow 
ends up being really close to my nose due to a deeper crawl. The large groove g -Nox have really long ears and it'll push really hard into my nose and I run the risk of potentially pushing the arrow off of the actual string because the string touches the tip of my nose when I shoot Baribo. So these have very short ears and I won't have that issue because I've shot these knocks before and pushed very hard into my nose and have not had one single issue. So that's another reason why I'm using these pin knocks in addition to the lighter weight. So now I'm going to fletch up three arrows with five and a quarter inch flu flues, left wing again, and using this accelerator, hopefully have it done in relatively quick fashion so I can get out there shooting faster. But I gotta make sure everything's lined up correctly first. Good thing I checked, but I need to make some adjustments here. All right, now I've got some contact. One down. Always fun to see like this before it gets burned. I am telling you, this accelerator has made fletching arrows so much more enjoyable. Now I'm gonna grab my burner, make sure it's set up how I like it with my indoor ribbon, my competition indoor ribbon set up, and then go outside and burn it outside. So this thing's pretty cool. It heats up this wire red hot and it literally just melts off the feathers um, in the design that you bend this wire in. So right now I'm making sure that the shape of the wire matches the profile of the arrow itself because I need it to touch the arrow in certain areas and not in others. Not actually touching the arrow, I'd, I need it to just burn the feathers. And so what I'm going to do is just verify that I have it in the areas that it needs to be and not in the areas that I don't want it to be. Okay, so this is set up exactly how I like it now. I'm gonna take it outside because the smell from this thing is horrendous and I'll show you how I burn my feathers and explain to you why I burn my own feathers. Okay, so I'm outside here with the feather burner all set up on a bucket. <laughs> I'm just doing it out here because it smells horrendously bad. It's worse than burning hair. So the reason that I burn these is because the standard shape feathers are very high profile and for sure they hit the shelf and the rest as they go by. Does it matter? I don't think so because feathers move out of the way so easily and that's one of the major reasons that I actually like using feathers indoors over anything else. But another thing that I like to do with this is due to the shape that I've bent, I can make it come to a very high profile and extend the profile straight back and then end it without having to taper up slowly to then come back down like you do with shield cut and parabolic cut, same type of thing. So this takes it to a very high height, not super high, but higher than other feathers sooner so it extends the large tall surface area which really grabs the air to make it spin and stabilize on the leading edge instead of waiting till the very very back so what i'm going to do now is plug this in it's going to heat up you'll see it's burning off some residue from previous burnings and once it gets nice and hot I will burn these off. That way they'll be shootable. Because in this condition, these arrows won't even make it to 20 yards. They'll probably just fall out of the sky because they have so much drag in this configuration. So by now, it should be warm enough. I'm gonna touch the tip of the feather to the actual wire to see if it melts it, and it does. So it's ready to go. So all I do is I put the knock in against the receiver and then spin the shaft.
make sure all the remnants are off. And now you can see the shape itself. Like I said, it's pretty much at the maximum height almost immediately and then it just tapers down in the back. So it's a lot more steering. There's a lot of steering or steerability in this actual feather because there's a lot of surface area here right away. But it's a little bit lower profile, so hopefully it won't touch anywhere on the bow. Not that it necessarily matters though. Now these don't look as good as they normally do. I think the wire is a little bit uh, out of the perfect shape that I like to have. It's not as sharp looking. But it will still work excellent and I hope these shoot really, really well. All right, so these arrows are built. They are ready to be shot and I'm here at the archery range outside. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, why I picked a certain piece of equipment or something like that, please do comment below. Let me know what you want to know more about and in the next video before I tune and set up my bow, I will address those questions and get to them to let you know why I'm doing certain things so that way maybe you can understand a little bit better and hopefully make better choices at home as well to potentially shoot better scores. At least that's what I hope will happen for you. These uh, feathers are almost fatter. They definitely are fatter in the front than they are in the back. It has an interesting little taper to it, and it looks, looks a little goofy, but I'm sure they'll shoot lights out. Look at the amount of helical and spin and drag and surface area on that arrow. This thing will be spinning like crazy by the time it reaches 20 yards. Does that uh, benefit anything? I have no idea. Don't really mind and don't really care. All I'm interested in is more tens. So I like the look of them and I like burning feathers because it just adds a little bit of personal flair that you can't get any other way and not many people do it. So I don't know, I just think it's pretty fun. Now I haven't gotten into splitting feathers and doing all that stuff to mix up different colors, but uh, I'm happy with this setup so far. So the arrows themselves, very, very, very lightweight. I will have to measure them to see how lightweight they are in comparison to my X10s. I bet they're lighter than my X10s actually, so they should come out of the bow faster than those did. I'll have very deep crawls, but uh, I'm definitely achieving my goal of hopefully building the most forgiving arrow I possibly can because I haven't been practicing at all and I'd like to do as well as I can here at 18 meters, 20 yards. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get warmed up and get to 18 meters and shoot some arrows. Shoot these Superdrive 23s. I'm gonna shoot the flat shafts and the bare shafts and see where we're at as far as tune is concerned. I have no idea and that's why I left them full length. They might need to be shortened. I really have no idea. So it's always safe to start longer because you can always shorten the arrow. You can never, mostly speaking, add to the arrow length to weaken them back up. So if they start a little bit too weak, I can always shorten them to make them stiffer. But if I start with them too stiff, I can never lengthen them to make them weaker. I can add heavier points, but again, when I started this video, I said I want the arrow to be as light as possible to maintain the speed out of the bow as much as possible to hopefully have more forgiveness. I'm not gonna shoot in this video. I will in the next video. So if you haven't yet, do subscribe and hit that notification bell because you'll be notified when I upload that new content. If you like this video, like the series, like all of my YouTube videos or any of them, please do consider sharing them. It genuinely helps this channel as well as consider supporting this channel. Many different ways and links in the description below. I try to produce all this content for free for people around the world to enjoy and hope it helps you become a better archer.